Now let's conclude by discussing another practical use of multiplexers. Just as we examined how we could use an M to N decoder to implement any M variable function, we will now examine how we can use an N to 1 MUX to implement some M variable function. To understand how, let's first look at implementing this 3 variable function F with an 8 to 1 MUX as shown. We first simply assign the variables to the select lines in corresponding significance. We then assign ones and zeros to the inputs corresponding to each min term of the function. Remember the select lines of the MUX determine which input will be output. So when we input a 101 into the MUX, whatever is on input 5 will come out. For this function, we must input a 000, 001, 010, or 111 to output a 1 which is the definition of function f, given its min terms. Implementing this function with an 8 to 1 MUX, we have implemented the function with value fixing functions as described back in section 3.6. I now ask, could we still implement this same function f if we only had a 4 to 1 MUX? That is, can we implement any 3 variable function with a MUX with only two select lines. Well, consider implementing the function g given in the truth table shown. We will tie the least significant two variables to the select lines. What do we do next? Well, recall that a MUX will output whatever is on I0 whenever the input is 0, 0. In this case, the MUX will output I0 when Y and Z are both 0. Does this knowledge help us? We simply look at the truth table as a set of four one variable truth tables of X, where each table is specified by Y and Z. For example, when Y or Z are both 0, we know that we need to output a 1 if X is 0 and a 0 if X is 1. Therefore, we simply let I0 be X0 so that the MUX will output the complement of X when Y and Z are both 0. So how about the other three lines? Well, for YZ equal to 0, 1, we have the output should be whatever X is. So we put an X on I1. For YZ equal to 1, 0, we have that the output should be 0, no matter what X is. So we put a 0 on I2. And for yz equal to 1, 1, we have that the output should be a 1, no matter the value of x. So we put a 1 on the input of I3. Notice here that since our multiplexer has less circuitry inside, that we must supply more complicated circuitry outside. Before we only needed zeros and 1s, now we need x's and x naughts. Now another good question. What would be different if we had connected the most significant inputs to the selectors, that is, X and Y instead of Y and Z? What would the input I0 need to be now? Well, when X and Y are both 0, we see that we need to input the opposite of Z. So we tie I0 to Z0. And for XY equal to 0, 1, we have that the output should be whatever Z is. So we tie I1 to Z. For XY equal to 1, 0, we also have that the output should be equal to Z. So we also tie I2 to Z. And the same is true for XY equal to 1, 1. So which choice of the select lines is best? Well, as far as calculating the inputs, the second method is best because it divides the truth table into four contiguous subtables. In the previous example, the same select values were scattered in the table. The first choice, however, may be better if it is easier to tie the inputs to ground or VCC instead of Z. Finally, what if we didn't have a 4 to 1 MUX, but only a 2 to 1 MUX instead? How could we still implement G? Well, the first question might be, which of the three variables should we tie to the single select line? 
We saw from the previous example that it is easier to calculate the input functions from the truth table if we use the highest order variables as selects. So I'll tie x to s0. What then do we tie to i sub 0? Well, we can see now that the truth table will be divided into two subtables, one where x is 0, the other where x is 1. And for x equals 0, we have that g should be 1 for y and z 0, 0 and 1, 1, and 0 for y and z 0, 1 and 1, 0. If we put this in a map, we have that i0 should be equal to y, x or z. Now, for i1, we have that g should be equal to 0 for y z equal to 0, 0 and 1, 0, and 1 for y z equal to 0, 1 and 1, 1. In another map, we see that i1 should be equal to z, which we should have calculated or could have calculated straight from the truth table. Notice once again that when the MUX becomes less complicated, the external circuitry becomes more complicated to implement the same function. For homework, you may wish to try implementing some four variable functions with 8 to 1 and 2 to 1 MUXs by tying various variables to the select lines.